Well, hello, everybody. I know I'm really late to the party on this one, but better late than never, right? Finally had a chance to check out Dunkirk on the big screen. This is, of course, the latest film from writer-director Christopher Nolan, based on the real Battle of Dunkirk in World War II, where the Nazis had the Allied forces completely surrounded on the beach of Dunkirk. And due to a strategic error by the Nazis, and with the aid of several civilian ships, they held the line and managed to evacuate far more people back to Britain than they thought possible. So when I decided to finally see this movie, I went all out. I didn't just go to a regular movie theater. I actually went to the Tech Museum in downtown San Jose and saw it on the big IMAX dome that they got there. And that was an experience and a half, let me tell you. And that's quite remarkable because nowadays, going to see movies in the theater is generally kind of a miserable experience. You got those uncomfortable seats, sticky floors because some idiot spilled their soda, the damn kids that won't shut the fuck up, the damn adults that won't shut the fuck up. How did we as a society forget how to shut the fuck up? I know, says the guy with the YouTube channel, but seriously, and you got the people who won't turn their cell phones off because they're too stupid to do so or they just don't care, and the ridiculously high ticket prices and the ridiculously high concession prices. Why put up with all that when you can get a pretty similar experience at home with a big screen TV and a surround system? I'll tell you why. Because of movies like Dunkirk and seeing them on a huge fucking screen that just envelops you, and especially during those point-of-view shots from the Spitfire cockpit that make it look like you're actually inside that cockpit, and the sound system that lets you feel every shot, every explosion, just... This is why I still go to movies. And I don't know if this is gonna end up being one of the best movies I saw this year, although it was excellent, but I have a hard time imagining anything is going to top this as a theater-going experience. And if you have not yet seen this movie and you want to, this is the way to do it. Now, as far as the movie itself, Nolan chose an interesting method for telling this story, basically as three different stories told over three different time periods in kind of a non-linear fashion that overlap somewhat. There's The Mole, which takes place over a week and covers the troops that are actually stranded on the beach of Dunkirk. The Sea, which takes place over a day and covers all the civilian boats that have been called into action to help rescue the troops stranded on the beach. And finally, The Air, which shows some fighter pilots providing air support to the people at Dunkirk. It all shows a very interesting aspect of war that you don't often see in war movies, and that is this feeling of utter helplessness. Usually war movies are all about conquering the enemy and winning battles, achieving a great victory, and this and that, and that's not really what this movie is about, at least not per se. This is all about running the fuck away. The heroes of this movie are not trying to win any battles at all. They are in full retreat, and they are surrounded on this beach and outnumbered by the Nazis two to one, and they are fucked. And their only hope is this fleet of civilian fishing boats, because the Royal Navy is in such dire straits, they will take all the help they can get. And the damnedest thing is, the whole time, they are practically within spitting distance of home. From Dunkirk to Dover ain't more than 50 miles. They are so close they can practically see it, and yet they're trapped. And that's gotta be one hell of a mindfuck. And seeing how all these men react, how some of them are brave in the face of adversity, how some of them completely crumble and all points in between is just amazing. And another interesting thing about this movie is you never actually see the Germans. You see their planes, and there's maybe one or two shots where they're kind of out of focus and in the background, but for the most part, they're like this invisible enemy that is always around them and attacking them, but they can't actually see them. It's like the unseen monster in a horror movie. And it makes their situation all the more frightening. Hans Zimmer's soundtrack does an excellent job of enhancing that mood. Except for maybe the very end of the movie, it's not so much music as 
noise. It's almost like the orchestra is in a constant state of wailing and agony. Every time those goddamn Nazi planes come around for another pass to try to pick off a few more British troops stranded on that beach, and the orchestra just builds into this crescendo, and this wall of agonizing sound just comes hurtling towards you, and oh shit, this gonna be bad. And while there is no great military victory here, at least not in the sense that you would expect, there is still a victory of sorts in that they got far more people off this beach than they thought they would. There were 400,000 men stranded at Dunkirk, and they expected they might get 30,000 back home, maybe, if they were very, very lucky, and they got 10 times that. Remarkable. And despite being in a full retreat, they still come home to a hero's welcome. And in fact, as soon as they get off the boat, there's this guy greeting them and saying, well done, lads, well done, well done. And this one guy says, what do you mean, well done? All we did is not die. He says, that's enough. And it was. You live to fight another day. Now, there's not much to say as far as the characters go, and if this movie has any weaknesses, I suppose that would be it. The characters are not all that strong, mostly because they're not really the focus as much as the situation. The only reason I remember any of them is because I remember the actors who played them, like Kenneth Branagh, James Darcy, Killian Murphy. Uh, although I did not recognize Tom Hardy until the very end of the movie when he finally took his pilot helmet off. I'm like, oh! Was that you the whole time? Mark Rylance's character, who was the owner of one of the civilian boats, was really the only one that stood out to me. This is a man who feels a great sense of duty to his country, but even more so to the young men who are fighting this war. There's a point where he says, men my age dictate this war, why should our children be sent to fight it? And I would expect many years prior in the First World War, he was probably one of those children that was sent off to fight, and he remembers exactly what it was like. He has seen some shit. And if he can somehow bring these boys home, you won't have to ask him twice. It's a great character, and it's Mark Rylance, and he's always good. So if I haven't made this clear already, if you somehow haven't seen this movie yet, you should. And if you have the means, I highly recommend the full IMAX experience. It's well worth it. And that's all I got to say about Dunkirk. Till next time, take care.